Hello, welcome to the Create Studio Creating at Home series. I'm Gemma and we're going to be creating together today. I've got a weaving project for us to do where you're going to use some recycled materials and some yarn, which could also be recycled, to weave um, our little rug. So here's what we need. We need a piece of cardboard that's pretty small in size. This one is about four inches by seven inches, but that's not the most important thing about it. It doesn't even have to be measured. You just want it to be about the same on the top and the bottom, and then you're gonna be weaving it. The next thing we need is uh, a couple of kinds of yarn if you have them, or you can do one kind of yarn and pick other materials, like this is a piece of plastic from a, a grocery bag. I've got a piece of cardboard from when I cut that cardboard up for the loom, that's what that's called, the loom that we're working on, or you can use some strips of paper, or you can just look around and think of other things that you would be interested in weaving. So I'm gonna give you the basics and then you can explore it from there. So once we have our piece of cardboard, we're gonna be cutting notches in the top and in the bottom. So they're kind of like little fringes. These happen to be about a quarter inch apart. And then we did the same number along the bottom. So that's, that's important to do the same number of cuts in the top and the bottom so that when you do this part, which is taking the end of another piece of yarn, or you could even use dental floss actually, any kind of a string or yarn that you have, and you're gonna put it in the last little notch there. And then I happen to have some tape, so we'll tape that in place. I think I taped it to the camera. Okay, so then that holds it down while you do the other part. This is making the loom so that you can weave. Then you're gonna go in from the top notch down the front to the bottom notch, and you're basically wrapping around the piece of cardboard to create these strings. And we'll just go around and around and around. So you wanna go around a whole bunch of times until you get to this stage where I have already been doing some weaving with yarn. And I'll show you a step or two here, and then you can explore it on your own. So I did all my stitches on the top and the bottom, I wrapped it around, I taped it on the back, and I just happened to stick a piece of cardboard in there. You can notice that when you're weaving, the process is about combining two things together in a series of steps that is Kind of interlocking them so we're going under and over and under and over and under and over and under and over just repeating that pattern as you go across and then the next piece that you put in if i had another piece of cardboard then i would want to go the opposite direction this one is a little bit i'm going to use a piece of paper instead i think that'll be firmer so the next row down, I wanna go opposite from the row above. So I'm gonna go under, but I gotta grab it on the front end. So I can go over and then under, and then over, and then under, and then, oh, that's right. And then over, and then under, and then over, and then, under. I don't usually do weaving standing up like this, so it's a little different, but it gives you the idea. Now the paper is woven and it's in the opposite direction than the piece of cardboard that's above it. So you can use paper for weaving and that would be like a placemat. I also have this piece of plastic, so I can go um, with these kinds of materials you don't really need something like a needle for string, which just makes it more convenient, really, but it's not 100% necessary. So this one is kind of a slippery one. So I'm just going under and over so that I can go across on this one, doing the opposite of what I did on the row above. So you always wanna be opposite of the one that you just did before. So you get the idea on that. And then I have my yarn. So I've actually done several, probably six rows or so here across the bottom. And I took a toothpick 
and some tape and I attached that to the bottom of the yarn so that it would be easier for me to go through. And that is, you're going under and over and under and over again. But the needle is a little short, so we have to bring it part way and then go back and get the rest. So we've got our extra yarn piece here. And then you just pull it softly. You don't want to pull it too tightly because it'll pull all the yarn in. So if you want it to have a rectangle shape, then you would want to be really soft uh, when you come around to the edges. If you do want it to be pulled in, then you would pull it in really hard. And I'm just going to finish up my row here so that I can leave you with this. Then you can take all of your different pieces. Let's see, we got that one. We got almost done. I'll just finish this up. There we go. And then I can scoot that down and mix it into the one above. I can do that with this piece too and this piece too. So you could do different materials. You could do a pattern of yarn and then a different material and a different material and then yarn and a different material and different material if you want. So then the way to finish this is you would then take your scissors and cut across the back to get all the pieces undone. But instead of taking them off, this is when you're completed and you're, you've made it as long as you want to. Then you're gonna take two pieces and you're gonna tie them together, like when you're tying shoes, so that they can make a knot. So you'll tie.